The Government of British Columbia has set the goal of becoming the most progressive jurisdiction in Canada for people living with disabilities. To achieve this, the province has a wide range of programs and services administered by several ministries for people with disabilities. In this audit, we examined BC's Disability Assistance Program, an important program for adults with health-related challenges that restrict their independence. This program is the responsibility of the Ministry of Social Development and Social Innovation. All but one province in Canada have similar programs and all are experiencing growing caseloads. As the nonpartisan independent auditor of the Legislative Assembly, the Auditor General audits the government reporting entity. This consists of ministries, crown corporations, and other government organizations such as universities, colleges, school districts, health authorities, and similar organizations that are controlled by or accountable to the provincial government. The Office of the Auditor General serves the people of British Columbia and their elected representatives by conducting independent audits and advising on how well government is managing its responsibilities and resources. Under the Auditor General Act, the Auditor General conducts and reports on both financial audits and performance, or value for money, audits. The Disability Assistance Program provides financial assistance to individuals to assist with meeting their basic needs, including shelter, clothing, and nutrition. It also provides them with some health supplements not covered under public health care, assistance with transportation, and supports to find employment. Over 95,000 British Columbians are currently served by the Disability Assistance Program, with financial assistance and supplementary benefits and services totaling over $1 billion annually. The program provides financial assistance for basic needs, supplementary health and living supports, and employment supports. We undertook this audit to determine whether the Ministry's Disability Assistance Services are accessible, if the Ministry can demonstrate that its eligibility decisions and payments for disability assistance are accurate and timely, and if the Ministry can demonstrate whether it contributes to improved outcomes for its disability assistance clients. We concluded that the Disability Assistance Program is not easy to access. We also concluded that risks are not being fully managed to ensure benefits are provided only to eligible individuals and eligibility decisions are made in a timely manner. Our third major conclusion is that the Ministry has not completed a comprehensive evaluation of the Disability Assistance Program and is unable to demonstrate that the program is contributing to improving the lives of clients. Let's look at our first major conclusion that the Ministry's Disability Assistance Program is not easy to access. Although the Ministry has a number of policies and strategies for promoting accessible services, the Disability Assistance System is administratively complex and difficult to navigate. Clients often need support navigating the system, information is not easy to find or clear, and the online and telephone services are not consistently accessible. The Ministry has done some analysis and consulted with stakeholders. However, we found that it has not fully assessed the accessibility needs of its clients. Further analysis is essential to ensure that service delivery options are appropriate given the needs and abilities of the clients served. Regarding program integrity and eligibility in particular, we found that the Ministry has a number of systems and processes in place to assess the financial eligibility of clients. However, the Ministry's system and processes for determining initial and ongoing eligibility for the PWD designation, which is based on a person's health status, can be improved. Health status is only checked when someone enters the program. As a result, there is a risk that some individuals may receive benefits that actually no longer qualify. On the flip side, though, there is also a risk that clients whose condition has worsened may not receive services or supports that they would benefit from. To know whether the Disability Assistance Program is successful, the Ministry should review and evaluate the program's results. The Ministry has not undertaken a full evaluation of its program outcomes. The Ministry has not clearly defined what it means to meet the basic needs of clients and the extent to which basic needs should be met by the program. That said, the Ministry tracks some aspects of client outcomes. This information indicates that given the level of assistance provided, 
some people may be at risk of not having their basic needs met. Individuals may require charitable donations, family support, and other sources of assistance to obtain appropriate shelter and other basic necessities. Tracking clients' health and social outcomes would help the Ministry identify gaps and any overlap with other government and community programs that serve this same group of citizens. It would also help the decision makers better understand the impact of policy choices regarding the amount and type of assistance provided to clients. Improving outcomes for people on disability assistance requires the efforts of multiple agencies and leadership from government as a whole. Regarding accessibility, we made seven recommendations. We recommend that the Ministry of Social Development and Social Innovation number one, collect additional information on its clients' needs and use this to address accessibility barriers for vulnerable clients. Two, ensure that its online information on PWD designation eligibility is clear and easy to find. Number three, review the PWD application process to address the risk that some applicants may not have a family physician and improve the clarity of the PWD application form. This includes developing guidance to help clients, physicians, and assessors in completing the application. Number four, Ensure that frontline staff training is relevant, current, and addresses topics such as client-centered services, accommodation, and working with people who have a wide range of barriers and disabilities. Number five, develop and implement additional strategies to ensure that timely, accurate, and consistent services are provided through the toll-free telephone service. Number six, improve the online application process to address redundancies and improve the clarity of guidance for applicants. And number seven, work with trusted third parties and Service BC to identify and address physical accessibility issues for clients. Regarding integrity and timeliness of eligibility decisions, we recommend that the Ministry develop and implement a risk-based approach for reviewing initial and ongoing client eligibility for the PWD designation to better ensure the program is serving only those clients who are eligible for benefits and supports. And report on the timeliness of eligibility decisions by measuring and reporting results against the service standards. The final recommendation is around program results and we recommend that the Ministry develop a comprehensive evaluation framework for the PWD program that sets objectives, targets, or benchmarks to define what it means to meet clients basic needs. Set standard measures to track whether clients can access appropriate shelter, food, and other necessities. And establish a baseline and targets to measure employment success for clients and in partnership with other agencies, define, track, and monitor a range of health and social indicators to assess this broader range of outcomes. This concludes our summary of this report. To read this report and our other publications or for more information about our office, please visit our website at www.bcauditor.com. The Office of the Auditor General encourages your feedback on this report as well as your suggestions for further audits. We look forward to hearing from you.